Dr. Ho and I put together this educational video for physicians and healthcare professionals on MR-guided breast biopsy. The general principles about MR-guided breast biopsy illustrated in this video apply to any equipment commercially available. The equipment shown in the video is what we use at our academic institution and is listed here. We have divided the topic in five sections for easy reference. The first section, general concepts, is a general overview that can be of interest to radiologists and physicians referring the patient for the procedure. The remaining four sections are for radiologists. The basic biopsy technique is an overview of the entire procedure, and the following three sections have technical tips and tricks for radiologists that perform the procedure. The duration of each section is shown here, and the links for each section are listed in the YouTube description of the video. First, let's begin with general concepts. MRI-guided biopsy is indicated when suspicious mass, non-mass enhancement, or focus is seen on the screening or diagnostic MRI, which have no correlate on mammography or ultrasound. So what is MRI-guided breast biopsy? It is a minimally invasive procedure that uses MR imaging for guidance to identify the target lesion, calculate the lesion coordinates, sample the lesion, and finally to place a tissue marker or a biopsy clip at the conclusion of the biopsy. MRI-guided breast biopsy are typically performed with single insertion vacuum-assisted biopsy devices. Core needle biopsy and fine needle aspiration are generally not performed due to smaller samples and multiple insertions. A biopsy clip or tissue marker is deployed at the biopsy site at the conclusion of tissue sampling. On the other hand, lesions that are not amenable for MRI-guided breast biopsy, MRI guidance can be used for clip placement only or needle localization and wire placement for subsequent surgical excisional biopsy. In preparation for the procedure, the radiologist performing the biopsy should screen for potential issues, such as renal insufficiency, which may preclude the patient from having another contrast injection. Other potential issues could include allergy to contrast, claustrophobia, or increased risk for bleeding, which may require pre-medication prior to the procedure. Because a breast MRI-guided procedure, as with any biopsy procedures, can often be stressful for a patient, preparing the patient before the day of the procedure is an important part for a successful biopsy. Here I have listed the radiologyinfo.org website produced by ACR and RSNA, which is a wonderful radiology information resource for patients and can help answer questions the patient may have regarding various aspects of the procedure they're about to undergo. On the day of the procedure, pertinent information, risks and benefits of the procedure are again discussed with the patient, informed consent is obtained prior to the procedure. Finally, during the breast MRI biopsy, patient lays prone on the MR scanner. The breast tissue is positioned within the breast coil and immobilized by the biopsy grid. The procedure typically takes 30 to 90 minutes and in addition to typical risks that can be associated with any needle biopsy procedure, be sure to also discuss with the patient in regards to vanishing lesion. In this scenario, the intended target lesion for biopsy is not visualized on the day of the procedure. In these situations, we do ask our patient to return in six months for follow-up breast MRI to reassess the region. Once pathology results become available, Benign concordant pathology requires six months follow-up breast MRI. High-risk lesions requires surgical consultation. And malignant results requires referral to oncology and or surgery. For biopsies that has inadequate sampling and or inconclusive pathology results, 
these patients may require repeat biopsy or referral for surgical excisional biopsy. These are the references for this section of the talk.